Deep in the heart of California's ancient redwood forest, a team of scientists led by intrepid biologist Harper Thorne made a startling discovery within the colossal trunk of the world's biggest tree. And as their drills echoed through the bark, the team uncovered a hidden chamber containing saying something beyond their wildest expectations. What they found was so shocking that it could reshape the history of the United States. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Geologist Harper Thorne always had a fascination with all flora and fauna, so when the government hired her and her team to check on one of the oldest and largest trees in existence, she knew she couldn't pass up on that. To her, though it was only a routine check, she and her team were, team were eager to see it, not yet knowing what they would find. All of them had gathered at the entrance of the forest. This was a special expedition, and the rangers had closed this section of the forest. The group went into the forest with vans filled with equipment. The tree that they were going to be studying was incredibly old. It didn't take them long to arrive at the tree. They certainly couldn't miss it. Though this type of tree was well known in the redwoods, this sequoia was the largest of them all. At first glance, the one they were meant to study seemed to be all right. However, they had not yet seen the back, the thing that put everything in motion. Well, it had been a stupid mistake not to do a perimeter check, but all the scientists just immediately went to get some samples of the magnificent tree. One of her scientists, Dr. Green, had decided to walk around the trunk to see if, on the other side, no tiny tiny branches had made their way out of the trunk, sprouting a few leaves. Dr. Green immediately called for Dr. Harper Thorne, who curiously made her way over to the back of the tree. And as soon as she did, a gasp left her throat. Shit, she cursed as she saw the large gash in the trunk. This must have been because of the storm. Trees around the sequoia had fallen all around it. And Lightyga bolts Jen, something definitely must have happened here. She tried to think about what disaster happened here. Had the storm been so rough that it could have damaged this tree or possibly destroyed it? A tree that had stood for thousands of years? Ejusionactor. Harper couldn't believe it. This couldn't just be because of a storm. She knew that there must be another reason, not a clue that it would truly shock her. She quickly gathered her colleagues on the much less undisturbed side of the tree. Yu and Wei, when they came into the proximity of the gash, most of them had a sharp intake of breath. They swiftly checked the other trees that might have caused the fall while Dr. Harper, Thorne, and Green looked at the large sequoia tree. We have to divide and conquer, Dr. Harper told, told her team that she gave everyone a task to do. She had no idea that with her own task, she would uncover something so incredibly strange that it might go into the history books. If Dr. Harper and Green started their work, Georgia hearing samples of the tree sap exuding from the gash. They had to ensure that the tree was still healthy and could continue its growth. At the end of the apparent gash, he found something she couldn't explain. Had this been the reason for the gash or has stopped the gash from continuing? The object was white and sleek, and the tree seemed to have curved around it, almost sucking it into the organism of the tree. So neither doctor had ever seen this before and they were flabbergasted by the sight. Dr. Harper took yet another sample of the Nog object, not wanting to touch it for fear of contamination or, worse, breaking it in any way, shape, or form. It, realizing the magnitude of the discovery, Dr. Harper reached out to top experts in archaeology, paleontology, mendendrochronology, inviting them to join a unique investigation in the heart of the Redwood Forest. Together, they began establishing a comprehensive research camp, equipped with the latest technology near the giant sequoia, poised to unravel its secrets. Under the towering canopy of ancient trees, the team meticulously set up a base camp close to the enigmatic sequoia. With a collective sense of purpose, the team prepared for a thorough analysis of the sequoia and its concealed mystery. As they carefully examined the white object, it became evident that it was a series of bones, each intricately entwined within the tree's ancient fibers. This discovery set off a flurry of speculation among the team, with each member proposing different theories about the origin and nature of these mysterious bones. In the shadow of the towering tree, the team huddled, discussing various theories about the origins of the bones. Ideas ranged from plausible scientific explanations to more fantastical theories, including ancient curses and supernatural events, reflecting the wide spectrum of human curiosity and imagination. As dawn broke, the team, armed with magnifiers and measuring tools, delved into the sequoia's rings. Throughout the day, a rough timeline began to emerge from the labyrinth of tree rings. As the day went, the reality settled in and despite their passionate debates and extensive knowledge, conclusive evidence about the origins of the bones remained tantalizingly out of reach. The mystery of the sequoia's hidden secret persisted, shrouded in the mists of time and nature's own enigmatic ways. As whispers of their discovery began to breach the confines of the forest, Dr. Harper, 
cognizant of the potential for public unrest, made a decisive call to quarantine the area. It knew that managing the flow of information was crucial to prevent a premature leak that could lead to panic or misinterpretation. Immediately, the team swung into action, setting up barriers and implementing strict secrecy protocols around the site. This facade provided them with the necessary cover to continue their work undisturbed while keeping the curious and the media at bay. However, this decision to shroud their work in secrecy was not without its internal conflict. Some team members grappled with the ethical implications of withholding such a potentially groundbreaking discovery from the public and the scientific community, feeling the tension between their duty to science and the need for discretion. As days passed, the burden of this secrecy began to weigh heavily on the team. The excitement of discovery was now tinged with a sense of isolation, as they worked in the shadows of the giant sequoia, aware that they were guarding a secret that could change the understanding of history itself. Despite the team's vigilant efforts to maintain secrecy, rumors began to percolate through the local communities. Whispers of an ancient virus, potentially unleashed from the heart of the mighty sequoia, started to spread like wildfire, igniting a blend of curiosity and concern among those who heard them. Soon, soon the media latched onto these rumors, broadcasting speculative stories that amplified the mystery into a looming threat. The escalating media frenzy and public concern inevitably attracted the attention of government agencies. Feed their interest added a new layer of complexity and pressure to the investigation, as officials began to inquire and scrutinize the activities at the secluded research camp. The idea of an ancient, unknown virus possibly emerging from centuries of dormancy within a tree struck a chord of deep-seated apprehension, fueling widespread speculation and concern. As the story continued to unfold, environmental groups voiced their concerns, apprehensive about the potential risks that the team's activities might pose to the ancient forest. My team conducted radiocarbon dating on the bones, revealing their incredible antiquity, yet their precise species eluded identification. With the confirmation of the bones' ancient origin, the mystery surrounding them intensified. Amidst the unfolding discoveries, ethical debates emerged among the team members. It's a Pitashi, they deliberated the ramifications of extracting the bones for further study against the potential damage such an action might and might inflict on the tree, which had stood as a silent guardian over these relics for centuries. In a faction within the team strongly advocated for the protection of the sequoia, arguing that the tree's integrity and historical value outweighed the scientific benefits of removing the bones. It's they believe that, that the tree, a living monument of nature's resilience, deserved to be preserved in its entirety. These conflicting viewpoints led to rising tensions within the team. As she confronted with the escalating tension and the growing whirlpool of rumors, Dr. Harper made the pivotal decision to go public. She realized that the truth about the bones needed to be shared to quell the fears and speculations that were spiraling out of control. The team hastily convened to prepare for a press conference. They meticulously planned how to present their findings, ensuring that the scientific facts were clear and accessible. A key focus of their preparation was to dispel the myths that had taken root, particularly the unfounded fears of an ancient virus. In a clearing near the ancient sequoia, Dr. Harper and her team faced the world's media. The revelation was met with a kaleidoscope atope of reactions from the public. While some expressed relief that the rumors of a virus were unfounded, others were captivated by the intrigue of the discovery, and a few remained skeptical, questioning the implications in the future of the investigation. Despite After exhaustive research and analysis, the scientists achieved a monumental breakthrough. They determined that the bones belonged to an unknown prehistoric animal, a discovery that sent ripples through the scientific world. His revelation raised as many questions as it answered, opening enough questions as it answered, opening a new chapter in the study of ancient life. A crucial piece of the puzzle emerged the presence of the bones suggested that either the sequoia was far older than previously believed, or that certain prehistoric animals had survived until much more recently than known. This clue was a game-changer, challenging existing beliefs about the timeline of natural history. The implications of this discovery were staggering. It had the potential to rewrite significant parts of natural history, altering timelines and challenging long-held assumptions about prehistoric life. Within the scientific community, the revelation sparked a wave of excitement. Researchers from various fields expressed eagerness to delve into this discovery. It was a rare opportunity to gain new insights into the evolutionary journey of life on Earth, igniting a flurry of scholarly interest and debate. The findings had profound implications for evolutionary biology and the study of prehistoric life. They suggested new pathways for research and understanding, possibly leading to revisions of the evolutionary timeline and a deeper comprehension of the biodiversity of ancient times. The discovery was not just about the past, it was a beacon lighting the way for future scientific exploration.